Well, it is now two hours and four minutes into the 8th day of July, uh, 2021, and we're continuing our burnout day. Uh, I just got up around midnight, I did some gaming, uh, my meditation has kind of fallen off because my mind just simply isn't there, I don't have the focus to do the meditation, it's just simply not there. This is what, one of the things that occurs on the burnout. Uh, anyways, here, I'm kind of just sort of finishing up. Uh, I've got two episodes left, two vlogs left of, uh, uh, me five vlogs. One of the things I enjoy about vlogs is like going, is that like going out and visiting people and you get to see, you know, uh, what they do and how, how they exist and, you know, the different, various different, uh, points of view and, uh, so on and so forth. So it's something I do enjoy. It's, it's, it's. Is visiting while sitting on your couch, if you will. So it's, it's, that's kind of the way I view it. Uh, but as it, I am just two hours in, and I'm feeling the burn again. I'm feeling burnt out. Uh, so that means it's time to transition back to bed again, and we'll see what happens. Is that uh, when I get up again, probably maybe four or five o'clock in the morning to go, for, you know, sleep for another three hours and. Get off of the, uh, uh, do the next, uh, two, three hours until I get tired again, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be like this all day long. Uh, th th this is what happens in a burnout. It does take me a while to really burn out, to really sort of, for the fatigue to hit, and when it does hit, uh, this is the pattern, this is what the reality is. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to leave this here for now, and I'll see you at the next transition point. There are many transition points. It is 23 hours and 10 minutes into the 8th day of July. Obviously, we're not on the scooter, because this is where I would say this uh, at the beginning of... Uh, our discussion and I talk about transition points because that's what I was talking about on the way back in terms of how you see things the perspectives the perspectives change depending on where you are in your and how you perceive things so you have a day-to-day -day transition from one point to the next that's what we see here but also notice on the weekly basis, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, that there is another shift. Uh, there are there are transition points between the week. And now on the 8th and 9th, there is a transition point uh, for the month. And being that we are in the month of July and the transition point has just clicked forward, uh, we are now looking forward in terms of our planning into August... And that means the summer's over. <laughs> August, and this has already started, the people have already started talking that their stores are already stocking for back to school. And the, and the discussion of back to school has begun. Uh, <laughs> we just like, we feel like we barely finished, and in many cases I really haven't finished. There's a lot of uh, organizing and reorganizing of my notebook that have to be done, of uh, my notebooks that have to be done, and uh, then I'll head back down to a deeper but deeper dive, but the thing is the research itself is changing. The nature of the research itself is changing. There are more features coming in that I didn't have before that will add new layers in, of understanding to the research that, I, that I'm doing. And this isn't true for a large chunk of the problem, but the thing is, is that <clears throat> even when you're off and... You're supposed to be at a sort of a transition point where, and this is sort of in the tr the summer is the transition point between uh, one research year and the other. It's almost like a school year. It, it, it parallels that. You know, you're in the summer, you're finished um, the sixth grade, you're going into the seventh grade. This is a middle middle school analogy. You're satisfied with what you've done in the sixth, but you're not quite quite done with the other done with it. But now you're worrying about and anticipating grade seven, and of course in the in middle school because you're in the middle of everything, including the uh, I would call the 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 
early years of your life, uh, you're not a child, but at the same time as not a teenager, so you're not an adult, obviously, there are new experiences that are coming out very quickly, and there's a lot of anxiety, and I guess this forms a lot of angst as well, as to what's happening immediately, the immediate is your, your immediate focus, your immediate perspective. But there's also something about the long term as well that sort of comes in and as the two sort of conflict with each other, trying to see, you know, the long term and, and also seeing the short term at the same time, one uh, it becomes a little uh, sort of develops a bit of an anxiety over that. But anyways, uh, the food shopping for the month, because I do f food shopping on the month, will come tomorrow. Everything has gone through with that. The purchases I need to make for the month have been purchased. They, they, all the shopping for the month has been done. Uh, so now it's on to August. <laughs> this is where we're setting our, our sights for because the large the chunk, the chunk of the work that had to be on the essentials for July are now done. And it's now sort of looking at and aiming the trajectory will be for August. So we'll see how everything goes. We'll see how everything sort of plays itself out. And then uh, we'll kind of go from there. So I think I'm going to leave this here for now. And I will see you in a couple of hours, probably uh, sometime in t into the uh, ninth day of July. We all can hear the phrase, the wee hours of the day, but it's actually the wee minutes of the day, and we're just 42 minutes into the ninth day of July, just came back from some gaming and meditation, and I think there are certain days that thoughts hang around my mind on a continuous basis, the same thing with emotions, and this is what produces the altered state. And so this is what we're going to talk about now is about the altered state, the things that are going on currently within my mind and my emotions. And one of the things I was sort of struggling with is, uh, again, the perception. It's a, it's a perception issue. And we talk about seeing the forest through the trees. Sometimes when you're too close to something, you don't see the bigger picture. But again, that has, that's an issue of perspective, and there's a lot of emotion that sort of attached to this. Like, you could say that when, uh, let's say, in your 20s, yeah, you could say that, that oh, yeah, 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 well, one day my parents will die, and, and, and that will be some time off, and it, that's the forest, but you're not at the trees yet. You, 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 it's something that's, uh, that's a, a bit of time off, so you're outside the time frame. And so you go through your life, assuming the parents, your parents will always be there. It's not until you get to a particular age that the parents start to get sick. You realize they're starting to get old. And in many cases, the parents do die. And so now you've come into, you, you, well, you first viewed the forest. You never really saw the trees. Now you start to get, you start to, starting to enter the forest, and the trees become a lot more present. They're in your awareness. And while that is a daunting concept on its own, in terms of how you feel, in terms of in terms of the thought, it is not until you pass your parents' death. Now, your friends your brother, your sister, your, people your age start to die because they're now old. That's another perspective. Because now you're in the thick of the trees. You're in the forest, in the thick of the trees. How do you see the forest? Which may be your second life, your your, your, your eternal life, or or wherever your, your, your soul is, you think your soul is going to go. And assuming you think that there is a soul. This perspective, these perspe and again, these are perspectives, changes your approach and your understanding of what's going on. And these become very complex feelings, become very complex emotions, and this is what philosophy is based on, trying to give some degree of answer to these, to these very complex questions, but in many cases, the intellectual, because they assume that they could know everything, 
say, well, yeah, there is an answer to it. There is something other that we can give an answer to. But they never achieved it. And what happened is near the end of the letter, they became very depressed because they realized that the time for them to figure out what was going on was running out. And they did not feel like being on the path infinitely. And this becomes the daunting task, sort of the daunting perspective Ooh. of the philosopher realizing that hey, with knowledge there is no fundamental end to it. There is always something more. You thought there was going to be an end, but there is no end. And so what happens, you've you got to realize that the existence that you have of plodding along, you know, walking bit by bit even to a point where you're 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 not consciously walking you just it's part of your routine just to simply keep walking this is you know you're walking in the meditative state this is walking the path and it is a very difficult thing to do because there are things that try to pull you off the path this is this isn't worth it this is difficult this is too difficult. And this, is, this kind of crosses your mind as you go through these transition points. And I'm back watching my uh, YouTube stroll again. This is part of my, I call it routine comfort. If everything around me is always changing, my routine that doesn't change is the, the YouTube stroll. And right now I'm at our uh, family nest. And this is some of the thoughts that come into all of this. Well, the end of the chimes there, it's uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, it's 19 hours, and yeah, you know, it's just 19 hours into the uh, ninth day of uh, July uh, 2021, I got my shopping order, uh, some of the chips I get. I'm in an Asian neighborhood, so my supermarkets are Asian, so I have an Asian lifestyle. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're continuing on. i uh, just upgrading my phone uh, to the Bell service now. Just uh, sort of what I'm in the process of doing. And so the uh, next step now is to do call forwarding. There are always differences between different plans, but at, at, at the end of the day, you look at, at the cost of it. And even though some things seem more expensive than others, uh, they end up, the 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 total cost. If it ends up being less than than what you're currently paying, then that's a benefit. So this is going to allow me to save forty dollars uh, plus. Uh, so I'm happy with it. Uh, it's just a matter of finishing up the final details of uh, how things end up working out. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm uh, currently at Femi Five Logs. Doing my YouTube, doing the YouTube stroll once again. Oh, did the gaming, did my meditation for now. Anyways, the meditation goes on throughout the day, but it doesn't always. It's not always in terms of the service is always there. It just depends on where I'm, how I'm feeling, and typically after I've been on the device for a while or I've been reading for a while the grogginess hits and that's kind of how you feel so uh, on to the rest of the day I'm gonna make myself some uh, milk tea right now uh, after I forward uh, my phone to uh, uh, another service number that uh, allows it to ring everywhere and uh, go from there alright so I'll see you in a bit Oh, well, it is uh, three hours and 40, 44 minutes into the 10th day of July. And this is our transition vlog, the tra transition segment, I should say. Uh, uh, from the end of the day, I was able to get everything I need to get done. Uh, the communications work is all done. Uh, it's not a bad transition. 
so I've got the communications work was the transition for the month. So I've finished all of the work for the month of July in terms of the, the essentials. I've done all the food shopping for the month in terms of the essentials. Uh, the airflow system is now fully functional. Uh, and that's why I'm wearing the sweatshirt because it's 60 degrees outside and it's 60 degrees in here, uh, Fahrenheit. So it's working very well. I don't, <laughs> you know, the days when it's too cool like this and I wear the sweatshirt not to, to put any heat on or anything like that. Uh, because when the day start to heat up, it gives the place a couple of days uh, before it starts to heat up and in other words the the airflow is such that it uh, it, it pulls it keeps the, the place nice and cool even when uh, the day is getting very hot typically before without this air this natural airflow system in uh, my place used to get uh, was in the summertime it was between 95 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Uh, it was very, very hot. Very, very, very now it, it barely breaks. It barely breaks uh, 82 degrees. So uh, that's about a 15 degree difference, significant. And what happens is the breaker, the 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 way the system works, it covers up the doors enough that when I close the system, the airflow system in the uh, for for the fall and winter. Uh, it actually acts as a thermal barrier that prevents the cold from coming in. So uh, it helps keep the place um, warmer than it would be if uh, the system wasn't there. So it, it acts as an all-weather system uh, in terms of called the environmental controls. And so it, 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 that's in as well. It's it's finished. It is a, a, it. It is fatiguing. It is oh, tiring, and I mean, this is what Carly feels. You know, it's 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 it's, it's uh, almost four o'clock in the morning. I haven't gone to bed yet. I still have a little bit more to do uh, to finish up for today, and that will sort of push the schedule ahead so that I'll I'll be able to clear my schedule uh, until about. Uh, um, uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, I think that will give me uh, more time to sleep. That will sort of uh, uh, f feel more relaxed if I do. If I take some of the work I would have done in a couple hours from now, move it forward to now, uh, it will give me more time to sleep. So uh, that was that's how I'm going to sort of work up my vacation. It depends on how long my body can sleep. To, uh, I said so I. Uh, did the last transition was uh, I think it was ten thirty eleven. No, no, it was it was it was almost eight thirty. Uh, I got up at around eleven o'clock in the evening, and uh, uh, I'm finishing that point right now. So it's uh, it's uh, about uh, four and a half hours, maybe not even. They've been awake, but I'm getting enough done. I'm getting. I said I'm getting enough done. I've got the transition for the month done. I've got all the food shopping done, and I did the transition, uh, the communications transition. That's all completed with now, and uh, so that takes care of uh, one of the main projects for the month. The uh, other main project for the month the, was the uh, was the airflow system. That's done. And now it's going back to cleaning. So hopefully I can get enough ahead on that. I still have some work to do in the closet. That's t typically organizational work. And bit by bit I'll get things uh, sort of back into some degree of functioning order.